찬송가 102장 부르시며 예배를 준비하겠습니다 세상 즐거움 다 버리고 세상 사랑 다 버렸네 주 예수보다 더 귀한 것은 찬송가 249장 부르시겠습니다 
싶고 Starting with the solemn prayer, let's offer up the Sunday morning service to Father God. By this, the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. Amen. Please stand up and sing together verse 1 of hymn number 29. Let's read the versicle number 48. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not envy, it is not boast, it is not, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perse perseveres, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Let's confess our faith uh, through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into the grave. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit down and offer up a prayer of repentance looking back on the week.
하나님의 그 사랑의 공간 안에서 우리 모두를 지켜주시고 또 품어주셨다가 오늘 거룩한 주일 아버지 하나님 앞에 비할 수 있는 은혜를 허락해 주시니 감사합니다 지난 한 주간도 우리가 아버지 하나님 앞에 합당치 못했던 모든 마음과 뜻과 생각을 돌아보며 오늘 자복하며 또이 시간 기도하오니 아버지 우리 허물과 죄악들을 용서해 주시고 오늘 또 아버지 앞에 합당한 마음으로 예배할 수 있는 은혜를 허락해 주시옵소서 감사드리오며 우리 주 예수 그리스도의 이름으로 기도하옵나이다 아멘 Let's sing together uh, hymn number 502 and then Pastor Cho t a e h i j o will pray for the service on behalf of us. Father God, who is worthy to be praised and glorified, we give, we thank you for your tremendous grace and love. Please help us worship you in spirit and in truth. The Bible tells us that faith, uh, everything is accomplished through faith. and we overcome by faith, and we are presented away to heaven by faith, and God's deep love and the grace of salvation by Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for leading us to be victorious through the Holy Spirit. And it's in this end time, the, the senior pastor has manifested the, the blessing power works of the Holy Spirit, and he has hovered us and cherished us and loved us, and he has helped us uh, realize about the sins and righteousness and judgment, He has nurtured, nurtured us that way so that we can realize about our sins and evil and cast them off and become victorious and live by the Word of God. Thank you for adding, us, adding more fullness to us. Please help us, help all of us march all the more vigorously and become more victorious. Please strengthen us and empower us to let us gather devote ourselves to gathering, gather, uh, devote ourselves to praying. Let us please help us share the gospel and please add more grace onto us so that we can 
make another leap. And our senior pastor is del delivering message on hell, 16th. Please let us have faith and life out of the message and have a greater awakening. Also, you have appointed our acting senior pastor and uh, uh, manifested power. Uh, also, joyfully help the presider of the service. And please remember all the MAMI members who are joining the service through GCN, Internet, and other media. Pour out the same kind of grace upon them. Please joyfully accept the praise and performance of Emmanuel Choir and each orchestra. Please be glorified through their praise. Please remember all the helping hands for this service and pay them back with the heavenly words and blessings. Please be with us throughout the service. Father, as we listen to the message, please let our ears be opened and make bread of them so that we can stay victorious during the year, uh, during the week and during the month. Please be glorified throughout the service. Father, thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The scripture for today's message is Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 and 32. Therefore I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Amen. Emmanuel Choir and his orchestra will glorify God with their praise and performance. And then, uh, see a pastor will deliver the message on hell.
Uh, dear brothers and sisters and members in branch churches in Korea and out of Korea and members in the local sanctuary and GCN viewers, this is the 16th session of Hell Summer Series. How fortunate we are that the Lord sent us the Holy Spirit. Even after accepting the Lord, until before we become completely blameless, we may sometimes fail to live out a word of God. The Holy Spirit then helps us to repent. When the believers do not live out a word of God, the Holy Spirit makes them feel afflicted and gives them the spirit of repentance so that they can repent. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 says, I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Everyone, as you live a Christian life and come more into spirit, what happens to your heart? You, your heart s become tender, meek, and sanctified, doesn't it? It happens by the help of the Holy Spirit. As promised, the Holy Spirit helps us shatter our self-righteousness and frameworks by which we insist on what we think is right and amend our sins. He also pours the love of God into our heart so we can confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. You shouldn't find your Christian life tough. To come into spirit quickly, you should have no self-righteousness and frameworks. As I told you before, um, even from when I was a novice believer, I didn't insist on myself. Everything, whatever it was, the words of truth, I only uh, say the amen to the truth. I changed my heart only in the truth. So I didn't insist on myself, like my self-righteousness and frameworks. So I sh could shatter my arrogance very quickly. I could cast off fleshly thoughts quickly. I, there was only yes, amen, and obedience. If you do so, you can also come quickly into spirit and whole spirit. We can feel this help of the Holy Spirit more strongly when we uh, thoroughly repent. Above all, the Holy Spirit strengthened us so we can bear the fruit of repentance, namely to turn from sins completely and live out a word. As mentioned, the Holy Spirit, together with the Lord, helps us have peace with God. What, is the, what serves as an obstacle in our Christian life is that because people don't find the sermons agreeing with the theories, that's why they commit, uh, con judge and condemn a lot of things, and they filter out the words. They should not do that. They should not have such fleshly thoughts. If they just say amen to the words from the altar, it's always right. For example, our Lord served even little ones, even little children. He told us to serve others, not, to, not, not seek to be served. If you want to live, you will die. If you want to die, you will live. It, which is, it is a different from our theories and knowledge which we've had. But you have, you have to just change your heart according to the Word of God. If you do so, then you can shatter all your fleshly thoughts quickly, and you can shatter your theories, knowledge, all these things quickly. And as Apostle Paul confessed, I die, you have to die daily as you put yourself to death like that. Uh, and when you have nothing, to, nothing left to put to death, then you come into spirit. That is why blasphemy against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. Jesus said it cannot be forgiven forever. But what is truly deplorable is that so many people do not even realize how grave this sin is, and they blaspheme the Holy Spirit. The retribution that the blasphemers of the Holy Spirit will receive is really heavy. Therefore, I hope you will always have peace with the Holy Spirit. I also urge you to pray that many souls will have peace with the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, and Uh, in the last session, I explained to you the case of a married couple having sinned together on earth and receiving punishments in the lower grave together. 
It is the horrible punishment of taking turns going into a pot of boiling liquid. In the lower grave are cases where a family receives the punishment together. There is a case in which a woman terribly stood against the Holy Spirit, and her parents and brother who took part in it received the punishment together. Because the woman was an important leader in the church, her family members also thought that they were leading a good Christian life. But actually, they didn't. They did some, um, they did some work for God. But at the same time, being the family of a major church leader, they abused their authority, giving a hard time to people around them. Because they did not circumcise their hearts, their anger and greed came out as these forms of evil. Even though you believe in God, unless you circumcise your heart, Uh, you may show these that there are no different than unbelievers who are evil and do, do not know God at all. Finally, the punishment came upon the family for their evil deeds. The father became seriously ill, being at the threshold of death. Only then the family members repented with tears and clung to God, asking for their father's healing. God accepted their repentance and the interceding prayer of their pastor and let him live. Then God said something unexpected to me. God said that if he called this soul at the time, the father could receive at least shameful salvation, but if his life is prolonged, he wouldn't even be able to receive salvation. And soon, uh, as God said, something happened, which made me realize it would be It would have been better if he hadn't gone to heaven when he was sick. The daughter, who was a major leader of the church, was severely instigated by Satan to betray the church. Then, her family members all left the church along with her. They didn't just leave, but they all committed unforgivable sins by blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Soon thereafter, the father of the family, whose life was prolonged by God's grace, finally died. If he Uh, if he had died before, uh, while he had at least a little bit of faith, he could have received shameful salvation. But after he was brought back to life by God's grace, he forsook his faith, thereby falling into deep hell. <laughs> he was brought back to life by God's grace, but he forsook his faith, th- thereby falling into deep hell. His family members will also fall into the lower grave according to their sins. Among them, her mother and brother will receive the same punishment to get, uh, along with her father. What kind of punishments would they receive? They are receiving their punishment at a place where there is a cliff that is so high that its, that its top is not, in, not to be seen. In that turbid space filled with the smell of blood, sounds of mourning like demons, weeping, and sharp screaming resound. In the middle of a high cliff are the three souls that look like three spots. They are climbing up what is virtually vertical. They climb up the rough cliff with bare hands and feet. The skin of their hands and feet and knees are ripped apart and covered in blood as if they had been rubbed with sandpaper. And yet, they keep on climbing the cliff because of the messenger of hell flying at their flying behind. They are extremely nervous, thinking when the messenger of hell would raise his hands towards them. It's because the moment the messenger raises his hands, bugs that are like part of him are scattered on the cliff. Just like countless tiny water drops coming out of a sprayer, Countless bugs cover the cliff, making the cliff look almost dark. These bugs begin to chase the, these three souls, showing their sharp teeth. They climb up the cliff very quickly. Suppose you open the door to your house and find hundreds of cockroaches as big as your thumb covering the floor of your living room. Just uh, imagine the most gross thing that could be maggots, that could be um, a snake, 
or centipedes, you must be so terrified. You would be even more terrified if they were fatally poisonous spiders or scorpions. If you can hear those many insects making crisp, crunching sounds as they move, you probably will have goosebumps all over your body. How appalling it would be if those bugs get on you, climb up on your feet and legs, and cover your entire body. But in the lower grave, it's not just hundreds of cockroaches. An incalculable number of bugs chase after the souls given as their prey. Those three souls on the cliff are so terrified to see those bugs and desperately climb upward. They try their best to get as far away from the bugs as possible. Being so desperate to run away, they trample on each other to climb up faster. The son may trample on the other uh, two, who are his parents or the husband and wife, trample on each other. They curse at and fight each other. They climb up the cliff, letting out their evil. But soon enough, they are caught up with by the bugs. When the bugs reach their prey, they cover them up and begin to nibble their hands, head, and entire body. At this moment, they cannot do anything because they don't want to fall off the cliff. They cannot shake the bugs off either. They cannot shake the bugs off either. They cannot but just leave the bugs to nibble their bodies. Uh, they cry like animals with the pain of their flesh bitten off by the bugs, twist their bodies, and let out more evil. They curse at each other. As they curse at it and trample on each other for their own benefits, the messengers of hell around them are overjoyed watching such a wretched and ugly scene. And at, the, at one point, the messenger that controls this punishment stretches out his hands to bring all the bugs back in. But these people cannot stop climbing up the cliff. They know that the messenger of hell will soon release the bugs again. The pain of climbing up the cliff with the bare hands and feet is never minor, but the idea of bugs coming to them gives them even greater fear. That is why they keep on climbing up the cliff in terror, even while their hands and feet and knees get ripped apart and covered in blood. Moreover, there is no other place than this cliff to run away to from the bugs. Of course, climbing upward doesn't mean they can get away from the bugs. They know they never can. Yet, they cling to the slightest hope that they may reach the top or summit if they keep going up. Brothers and sisters, next, I will explain about the punishment of a person who severely blasphemed the Holy Spirit through words. The Bible has many verses emphasizing that we be cautious with our words. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Um, in our ancient dynasties, um, like in Joshua dynasty, there were people who misused their tongues, and they were poisoned to death, got tortured, and died as a result. I remember many of these examples. They got beaten with rods by making mistakes with words. They or they were got killed or was given poison or banished to somewhere. Uh, towards the end of Joseon dynasty, because the king and his daughter-in-law were not cautious with words, uh, their words spread and bringing about many misunderstandings. You know, there were always people who spread words. There were people who spread words. They couldn't, uh, even while knowing that they would cause others to be alienated, they ended up spreading words. And they spread words according to their own thoughts. 
they spread the words with their own misunderstanding. So, ill feelings and misunderstandings arose between the daughter-in-law and the father-in-law, and they, their relationship failed. So, that even caused the country to be destroyed. If they did things truly for they made peace and did things for the country, the country wouldn't have been destroyed. You know, also, the king's son made a mistake with words, so he faced such an unfair situation. The king's son, uh, the king's son never thought about treason. He never thought about removing the king and ascending to the throne. Yet, he suffered the false charges. Because he made a mistake with a few words, he, uh, he suffered the false charges. So that was known to the king, and the king killed, the su- killed him, and he banished him to a place and sent him poison and had him died. You know, we have to know that words can destroy or save us. It can make us rich or suffer failure. There are many of such cases. Moreover, in the Lord, the enemy devil always tries to accuse us with the words of our lips, so we have to be all the more cautious. Those who speak only words of truth and goodness will eat good fruit from their words. On the contrary, those who speak evil words and words like faith, uh, those who speak words and evil words and words lacking faith will eat its uh, evil fruit. The fruit of our words is, is exact, and one may face great tribulations just by saying a couple of words imprudently. For example, some believers are overcome by their family members' persecutions, so they even say or pray that God make their family members repent even by having an accident. Then this word will be heard by Satan immediately, and Satan will begin to accuse them before God. Satan insists that they, what they've said must happen to their family. And if this accusation is in accordance with the justice, their family may get a disease or get into an accident just as they said. In turn, they suffer in various ways by becoming disabled, etc. Even though their family members may repent through them, they wouldn't have needed to bring afflictions, such afflictions upon them. Couldn't the Almighty God save their family members through better ways? God has many better ways or good ways to save their family. Some speak words of untruth to bring trials upon themselves, but don't even realize it. They can end their trials. They can end their trials quickly through repentance, but they don't even remember what they said. Therefore, I hope that you make sure to keep in mind that your words will surely have their consequences. Also, the problem is people cannot remember what they said. Even after they say something untruthful, they don't remember it. That's why they cannot repent. If they say such things a year ago, they cannot even repent. Some people cannot even remember what they said just a minute ago. They say something just a minute ago, but when they're asked about that, they say things like, I never said that. You know, As for men of flesh, they may claim they can remember all their words, but in fact, they so often fail to remember their words after some time. I urge you to get a guard over your mouth so you can be on alert and control your words. Brothers and sisters, even if you say something with a good intention, if that is not a word of truth or goodness, it may cause you a trial. But If you intentionally tell a lie to blaspheme the church, the body of the Lord, and a servant of God, and to insult them with evil words, how much greater the retributions will be? Moreover, to slander and wrongfully accuse a church that shows the works of the Holy Spirit and God's servant who is loved by God is to blaspheme and speak against the Holy Spirit. You know, signs and wonders and power are done through the unity with God and the Holy Spirit. It's not done by man. How could man manifest signs and wonders and power? No one can do that. It happens only through the unity with God and the Holy Spirit and with the Lord. If someone judges and condemns such works, how 
grave his sin would be. It's like judging and condemning our Father God, the Lord, and the Holy Spirit. That's why their sin is grave. You know, when Moses took the g i s t women, his brother and sister judged and condemned his act. And then a curse came upon them right away. His sister became leprous and got severely rebuked by God. You know, even if something does not agree with your thoughts, or you you should never, uh, it is not never right to judge and condemn the servant of God, because a servant of God is always inspired by God and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, people who do that will surely be questioned for their words when they face God's judgment. In Matthew chapter 20, uh, 12, verse 36, Jesus said, But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give it an accounting for it in the day of judgment. Even when people say words of no benefits, words, uh, worthless words, or jokes, even when they say that, they use specific words, don't they? And they are sure to be questioned for what they said. But the problem is, after they say worthless words, they don't even remember them. Those who blaspheme and speak against the Holy Spirit with their words serve as the instruments of Satan, interfere with the kingdom of God, and finally get branded as men of darkness. And after the judgment, they will fall into the punishment of the deeper parts of hell. This case, which I'm talking, I'm going to talk about, falls into this category. This soul did many volunteer works in the church for a long period of time. On the outside, he was a worker who was full of the Spirit and dearly loved God, the shepherd in the church, and the members. One of his one of his family members was also healed of an incurable disease which could have left her with a disability. Some of his family members were even brought back to life from the threshold of death through prayer. As the flock of this church loved by God, he and his family members had numerous experiences of God's grace and blessings. As they received so much grace, they seemed filled up with the Spirit, diligently did volunteer works, but they didn't circumcise their hearts, which is the most important thing. As a result, they were all deceived amidst a test and left the church. His children received the works of Satan first, and he was deceived by his children. He forsook all the grace he had received and left the church. Thereafter, he began to interfere with the church. He didn't just say a couple of words, but he visited members in person like a pastor visiting his flock and urged them to leave the church of life. He even called and visited some members in distant part of the country and in his hometown to deceive them. Even while he left the church due to the lack of faith, if he had recognized the grace he received, he wouldn't have believed unsubstantiated rumors before checking them. He would have tried to watch the situation in silence and discern what is the real truth. If he had done so, he would have received a chance to receive God's mercy, but consumed by his own evil, he committed so many sins with his lips. As a result of his sins, he will receive the horrifying punishments in the lower grave. When this soul reaches the lower grave, the messenger of hell will first sear his mouth that blasphemed the Holy Spirit with a hot iron. The shape of his mouth will disappear, and only a burned remark, uh, only a burned mark will remain. Then he will be placed in a glass too, which is just the size of a man. Either end of the tube, the top and the bottom will be covered by a lead. Those lids have something like a metal handle attached on them. It would be easier to visualize them if you think of a handle of a champagne bottle. One of the handles is connected with his head and the other with his legs. The messengers of hell will hold the handles and begin to spin them. Then his body inside the tube will become twisted like a cooler. With his body twisted more and more, blood will gush out from all the holes of his body, including his eyes, nostrils, and mouth. 
Just like dirty water comes out when you squeeze a rack, blood and water will spill out from his whole body. Think about this. It wouldn't be easy to get even a drop of blood by twisting your finger. It'd be possible when some, tremendous, uh, when some tremendous force is applied. But as for the soul, not just his finger, but his whole body from head to toe gets twisted until water and blood are squeezed out. The bones will crack and get crushed, and the muscles and skin will be torn apart as they are twisted. The internal organs will burst. As one's body is crushed this much, then all kinds of water, including blood, will sp- spill out of his body. It is hard to imagine water being squeezed out of his body and the pain of t h e s soul being tortured that way. Is all, uh, and the pain of t h e s soul being tortured that way is all the more unimaginable. The glass tube will be filled with bloody liquids from his body, looking like a bottle of wine. When there's no more to be squeezed out from his body, the messengers of hell will leave him alone for a moment. They leave him, so his body will completely recover. But having his body recovering to the original state is completely meaningless. Right from the moment he fully recovers, he fully recovers, he will be twisted and squeezed again. This cycle repeats endlessly. Even the time of recovery means nothing but the preparing time for the next round of torture. From the next session, I will explain about other kinds of punishment that the souls who are blessed with God, the Lord and Holy Spirit, receive. Brothers and sisters, you should never commit sins like blaspheming and speaking against the Holy Spirit or betraying God. By blaspheming the Holy Spirit, you may not, rec- you may not receive uh, salvation forever, or your business or workplace can meet disaster, you go through troubles, and things don't go well always. You're always in trouble. Such things happen. Such things are common. You have to prevent, prevent yourself from blaspheming the Holy Spirit. There should be no fleshly, you should not give fleshly love to your family members. You know, those families who had fleshly loves, we can see how wretched their outcome was. If a member of your family is standing against God, true love is leading him to the right way by all means. It is never love committing sins together out of fleshly affection, rather, it is hating him. Also, as you love God, the church and the shepherd and the members, you have, to, you have to have spiritual, unfailing love. If one has confessed that he loves God, but later he curses as he finds things going against his benefits and not agreeing with his thoughts, how filthy and fleshly, fleshly is, a fleshy is. Therefore, I hope you will only sow good words and deeds and spiritual heart before God. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will enjoy and give thanks forever for the abundant rewards that will be stored in heaven according to what you have sown. So let's reflect on today's message and our prayer. Um, prayer for the sick if you are sick lay your hands on your sick parts and if you are not sick lay your hands on your chest and receive the prayer with your heart's desire hallelujah almighty God our loving father please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now 
Shoya works uh, that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in branch churches and local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith of belief from heart to drive away negative thoughts and doubts and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, and nerves, and tissues, and cells, whatever, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and vir uh, viruses, and infirmities, go away. Light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated disc, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be listened, get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well, let the ears hear well, let the blind come to see, the deaf hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them up after effects of all kinds of accidents. Fix their broken bones. Restore them from burns. Let the heat and burning sensation go away. Um, Father, let there be no skull left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves and tissues and cells be regenerated, bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessing of conception, receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places and their servants, go away. Go away, evil, unclean, false and deceitful spirits, separating spirits and all forces of darkness, loosen the bonds of wickedness, darkness, go away. Light come. Father God, give them strength to cry out of prayer and the power to cast up sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery walls of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blessing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding, and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things, and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink, or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I've met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Please be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's sing together m o m e n praise number 44 and present our offerings.
I'll give you announcements. We welcome all newly registered members. Uh, the senior pastor's book, uh, Worshiping God in Spirit and Truth, has been published in Macedonian and um, in ebook forms. Mami News and Malaysian version has been published online. And Mami News in Korean, 994th issue has been uh, published in digital format. You can check on the website. Uh, senior pastors' columns have been carried on Christian newspapers and the uh, church, church's leaflet. The, those who have met God, the June th issue has been published. They are placed in the church's information desk. Please use them a lot for the sharing of the gospel. And in celebration of the Feast of Harvest, we will have the baptism ceremony. Those who will be baptized, please uh, study the details and before you attend. The training for a uh, training session for the Sunday school teacher will take place on June 11th. And the and the please pay the membership membership fee for the baptize to each of your parish leaders. Um, and the preliminary test for the Bible quiz will go on from Uh, senior pastor's books are available in major bookstores, and they are also available in ebook or audiobook format, and they are also available in uh, online bookstores. Please use them for your growth of faith and for the sharing of the gospel. We will pray for the offerings. Father God, we give tithes, thanksgiving, charity, support, and Sunday offerings, as well as for missionary works. Also, we give sanctuary construction, vowed, special, and holy rice offerings. Father God, please accept them and lay your hands on them, so that a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over may be poured into our lap. Please fulfill our heart's desires and answer our prayers and petitions. Please protect our homes, work, and businesses. Bless us so that our tithes will increase and the reasons for thanksgiving may flow. Also, bless us 30, 60, or 100 times according to what we've done and sown. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. It's time to welcome the newly registered members. Your children have registered in the church of the body of Christ. Please seal them in heaven as sheep of Mommy Center Church. Please let their souls prosper, everything go well, and be healthy in spirit and in body. Please let them stand on a walk of faith. Give them strength, grace, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit to overcome the world. Bless them to eagerly seek and meet an experience and give glory to you. May they love you, be loved by you, and lead them to your kingdom. Thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We welcome them in our Lord's name. Let's finish the service with the senior pastor's benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the utmost love of God, who is always with us, and the impression, the influence, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit who leads us to know Jesus Christ and into the righteousness be with you, all the congregation here and in branch churches and sanctuaries and God's children all over the world who are attending this service, the GCN or Internet. Amen.